Hi, this is Sue Jackson of the Live With MECFS blog, and I'm here today to give you a little bit of an update on how things are going with the carnivore diet, which I fully started January 2nd, um, though I was easing into it for the week and a half or so before that, two weeks before that. First, I want to emphasize, I am not a medical professional. I am not recommending that other people start this. I am just here to share my experience, the reasons why I'm doing it, what the results have been so far, the pros and cons, um, before you drastically change your diet, you absolutely should check with a medical professional. Okay, so with that ca caveat, let me tell you um, about my experience. So first of all, um, I'm not gonna get deep into why I did this, just the basics. If you want to know more, um, I take a look at my chronic illness vlog from January 8th. 2024. In that vlog, it was a weekly vlog covering a lot of stuff, but in the middle of it, I do have like a 15 minute um, discussion of why I switched to a carnivore diet. So for background, I've been eating a paleo diet for more than five years now at this point, I think. However, um, and I think this is where I made a mistake. I, right from the beginning, and this is right in my blog post about paleo diets, which I'll, I'll link below, um, below this video where there's the description at the end of it, it says dot, dot, dot more. It's very subtle, but if you click on that, you'll see the whole list of notes that go along with this video. So yes, so I was doing what I called a modified paleo diet. It did include beans, um, which I love, <laughs> peanuts, um, some, some potatoes, red potatoes. So I wasn't really strict with the paleo. I was more at the beginning. And over the years, it, it loosened. I was not strictly following paleo. Last year, the last three months of 2023, I was in a severe relapse, flat on my back on the couch, horrible flu-like aches, head to toe, um, every single day for three months. And throughout the year before that, I had had periods like that. That last section was the worst, but throughout the year I had times like that. And I knew one of my biggest issues, as it has been for about 20 years, was yeast overgrowth. I should have started with, I have ME-CFS, myalgic encephalomyelitis, here in the US, sometimes called chronic fatigue syndrome, though that's really a misnomer. Um, it is an immune disorder, but not strictly autoimmune. Parts of the immune system are overactive, other parts are underactive, which makes it very, very difficult to treat. In fact, there are no FDA approved treatments for this disease, which I've had for almost 23 years now. So as I was saying, yeast overgrowth has always been a problem because of the immune dysfunction in my disease. This is very similar to people with HIV, um, basically, our immune systems, parts are overactive for MECFS, but other parts are similar to people with HIV and our immune systems just don't control the yeast. Um, yeast or candida is perfectly normal and natural. It's in every single human body. Um, the problem is when the immune system doesn't control it and it grows out of control. So I was dealing with that a lot. Um, this is also an issue for many people with autoimmune disease because they may be taking immunosuppressant drugs like steroids that can also cause yeast overgrowth. So this is a pretty common issue in people with immune problems. So my son and I saw our functional medicine specialist in December. She took a look at my mouth. She said, you still have thrush in your mouth. 
which I was actually surprised by. I had stopped checking for it because I had, I will also um, link below to my blog post on managing yeast overgrowth. I was doing everything in that blog post, like over a dozen different treatments and remedies, herbal antifungals, prescription antifungals, restricted diet. I was doing all of that, lots of probiotics. Um, my doctor during this bad patch at the end of the year had even put me on a very strong antifungal, stronger than the one I normally take. So it really surprised me that I still had yeast. But then again, it didn't because I had these horrible aches I couldn't get rid of. That for me is an immune sign. It's a sign that my immune system's overreacting. So our functional medicine specialist suggested a carnivore diet. After reading some things at home and watching some videos, I took her advice. I severely restricted my diet the very next day. Um, my short-term goal, this was like a week and a half before Christmas, and my short-term goal was just to improve enough that I could enjoy Christmas with my family. I had family coming to visit. I did not want to be upstairs in bed with horrible aches while everybody was here. That was my short-term goal. Okay, so let's back up a moment. What is the carnivore diet? It is what it sounds like. It is mostly meat only. It is meat, fish, seafood, eggs, butter, some high fat dairy is allowed like um, heavy cream or cheeses if you're not dairy intolerant. Now I'm severely dairy intolerant. I'm not just lactose intolerant. I'm also intolerant to casein, a protein in milk, and um, whey, a very significant protein in milk. So, um, so mostly I'm avoiding the dairy except for butter and um, occasionally I have a little bit of cheese. Um, so it's lots of protein, but what she explained to us is that a lot of fat is also important. Um, and I imagine if you didn't have the fat, you'd probably get pretty constipated. So, um, and it's very, very important to drink a lot of water and to get plenty of salt and other electrolytes. That was also emphasized. Now, I keep it off camera, but I always have a tall glass of water in front of me. Also, you know, herbal tea. I am drinking herbal tea and water all day long. Um, so I, because I have orthostatic intolerance, which is a part of ME-CFS, um, this is an inability to maintain a steady blood pressure and heart rate. So lots of salt, salt and lots of water has always been important to me. Um, but I tried to have even more. I have a scientific background. I want to know the science behind something. I still don't fully understand the science behind this, which bothers me. <laughs> so I'm not fully committed to this long term. I am trying it short term. Um, there has been one study from Harvard with several, you know, well-respected researchers, um, not a controlled study, but a survey. And they surveyed about 2000 people who had voluntarily chosen to do the carnivore diet um, they started with a much bigger pool. So there, there is some science here. You know, they did use statistics to figure out who to eliminate from the group for the study. Um, they wanted people in certain age ranges, et cetera. So it was a Harvard study, um, but it was a survey of people already on the carnivore diet. So just a few facts from that study. Um, the age range of the 2000 people was between 18 and 85. They were from the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, all over the English speaking world. Um, their weight ranged from 84 pounds to 388. Again, a wide range there. They had been on the diet for anywhere from six months 
to the longest was 28 years, which I find hard to imagine, but. Um, so in the part of the survey where they asked people why they had done it, almost everyone said for health reasons. Some people wanted to lose weight, some people were diabetics, etc. Um, I'm going to focus here on the part that is more relevant to me. 56% of the respondents said they were doing it because they had autoimmune disease. Of those, 89% said they saw significant improvement or even reversal of their autoimmune disease. Now, when I read that, that just kind of blew my mind. Um, and that encouraged me to try this. Um, not relevant to me, but 100% of those with diabetes were able to come off of injectable insulin. Pretty remarkable. And there were all kinds of other health benefits cited by the people in this survey. Weight loss, lower blood pressure, lower blood sugar, um, what else, lower cholesterol. Now, I know this seems completely counterintuitive because you're eating all this fat which we've been told our whole lives is, is bad for us. Um, but I've recognized since I became chronically ill that what's really the worst for us in our diet are sugars and refined grains, the staples of many modern diets, um, white flour, white rice, cereals, pastas, um, sugar, all kinds of sweets. All of this stuff is a staple of most modern diets. And for the most part, I think the learning here is that those are the things really causing a lot of health problems. And there's, there, there's plenty of research to back that up. That's been known for a long time. Not a lot of people listen to that, but the research does show, you know, that that is true. Okay, so my own timeline. So I think we saw the doctor around December 18th. What I did immediately was move from paleo, modified paleo, to car carnivore plus cruciferous vegetables. So I did some of my own research more than I even than I had done in the past on an anti-yeast diet. And I'll include a link below to the article I found that was very helpful, listing foods to avoid and foods to have more of. The foods to avoid are all things I was already avoiding, sugar and flour, etc. One thing this article mentioned was that cruciferous vegetables that's thing in the things in the cabbage family, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, um, all those kinds of things are cruciferous vegetables. They contain sulfur compounds, which apparently the yeast don't like. So in the short term, between um, that appointment or around December 18th and New Year's, I went to carnivore plus cruciferous vegetables. So for lunch and dinner, I was still eating a pretty good size of vegetables, but only cruciferous. The only other thing I was eating during that period was a little avocado. It is a fruit with no sugar. Um, maybe a few olives as well. I might've had a few olives during that time. But just going down to that did clear up the yeast overgrowth for the first time probably for the first time all year or in several years. Um, the, the thrush went away in my mouth. Thank goodness the flu-like aches went away, which were just devastatingly disabling. Um, my energy came back. Indeed, by Christmas Eve, I was feeling better and I was able to enjoy Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with my family. I was surprised, but my husband said, when I came home and told him all this, he said he would do it along with me to some degree. Um, he's healthy for the most part, but over the last few years, he has developed high blood pressure. Um, I think higher sugar than he used to have, high cholesterol. So he is on some medications now. Um, so his, goal is to lose some weight 
and bring his blood pressure and cholesterol down. So as of January 2nd, we went, if you'll pardon the expression, whole hog. <laughs> I went full carnivore. He went pretty much what I was doing before, which is the carnivore plus cruciferous vegetables. Um, his diet at this point is more keto, maybe even paleo at times, but still quite restricted. You know, still no grains, no sugars. Um, he's avoiding any starchy vegetables. We're both avoiding fruits, which kills me. I love fruits and vegetables, actually. Um, I, am, I have never been someone who was forced to eat their vegetables, except when I was very young. <laughs> So anyway, since January 2nd, I started out with strict carnivore. My husband was doing closer to keto, which is keto is limiting your carbs to 20 to 40 grams per day, focusing more on fats. Nuts and seeds are okay. Um, things like avocado and coconut and olives are okay. On the keto diet, olive oil is okay. With carnivore, you're supposed to avoid all vegetable products, including vegetable oils. So it is cooking in, we've mostly been cooking in butter, bacon grease. Um, sometimes I've, I've bought some pancetta and we'll um, fry that up before I put a piece of meat in the pan. Okay, so what's similar, carnivore and keto both focus on ketosis, which is a state where your body is burning fat instead of simple sugars or carbohydrates. Um, we are definitely both hit ketosis pretty quickly. So the results so far, um, about a week in, on 100% carnivore, I was feeling better than I have felt in several years. My energy has been great. Um, my stamina is so much better. I have been out in the world for the last few weeks, which is just such a joy after being stuck at home for so long. Um, I've been seeing friends again. One of my closest friends is in the midst of a huge move while she's dealing with two family crises and big family crises. And I am so, so grateful that I've been able to help her out. I've been over at her house helping with the move. Things I, she, the move's been going on for several months and I felt awful because I was stuck on the couch and couldn't do anything. So I am definitely feeling a whole lot better. Um, I've lost a few more pounds. Overall in the last year, since this time a year ago, I have lost 20 pounds. But the first 17 to 18 of that was from finally, finally normalizing my thyroid function. Again, I will link below to the blog post on that. Um, I did a video that partially covers it, so I'll link to that as well. So, so, so important for anyone with chronic illness to get that checked out. And the blog post and the video detail what kind of test to ask for, because the one test most doctors will ask for isn't enough. So, Highly recommend that. It took a full year working with my primary care physician, getting tested every two months, increasing the dose of the medication every two months, adding a second medication, um, and then finally toward the end of the year, adding iodine, which helped tremendously as well. So getting my thyroid in order was a huge help and I want you to know that was in the background because I think that is also a big factor in why I'm feeling so well today. Yeast overgrowth was giving me those horrible flu-like aches, those immune symptoms. They were keeping my immune system activated 
which with ME-CFS is awful. It means you just feel like you have the flu all the time. So that was covering up, I think, a lot of the gains that I was getting from improving my thyroid function. But even with that on top, I was aware that my energy was better. I still couldn't do anything because I had those awful aches. And with ME-CFS, if you if you're active, when you're not feeling well, you get a lot worse. So I knew I had to stay flat on my back, but I was aware my energy was improving behind the scenes. So I want you to be aware of that because my improvement is not only carnivore diet. It is also improving my thyroid function, getting that closer to normal. I'm still not sure it's, it's completely normal. So the carnivore diet, I've lost a few more pounds after the what I lost just for normalizing my thyroid, um, which is, I'm fine with that. I, I don't wanna lose any more. I'm actually now down 20 pounds where I should be. This is kind of my healthy weight. I've been carrying all this extra weight around since I became chronically ill, but also the whole endocrine system gets messed up with ME-CFS. So there's a lot of puzzle pieces to this. ME-CFS is a very, very complex disease. Um, but I wanted you to understand that's behind the scenes. My husband has lost 16 pounds so far. Um, his belly is just disappearing. So he's seen results too. Um, on the downside, after just one week on carnivore, I got this really severe dry mouth and um, extreme thirst. So severe that I actually thought the thrush was back because my tongue felt dry. Um, and with thrush, very often your, your tongue feels funny. And I'd look in the mirror, but because my tongue was so dry, I couldn't even tell. But I was like, I'm not eating anything that could possibly feed yeast. And I read up on it and it turns out the dry mouth is a sign of being in ketosis. I talked to the diet specialist in the functional medicine specialist's office. Um, she just said more electrolytes. So I did try that. What I have found is helping me is I am no longer 100% carnivore. I'm like 97%. <laughs> So at lunch and dinner, I'm having just a few bites of a cruciferous vegetable or a quarter of an avocado. Um, so for dinner each night, we're making meat or fish and my husband's making a serving of vegetables for himself. And then I'll pick out like three little florets of cauliflower or broccoli or whatever he's having. Um, or maybe a quarter of an avocado with my lunch. Um, these are things that I know won't contribute to the yeast. I am trying to only have a little bit. So my mouth is still pretty dry, um, which is annoying, but it's not the way it was before was like intolerable. I really could not stay that way. Um, and I have read that it fades over time. Don't know about that. So most significant for me is no more flu-like aches, no immune symptoms, um, great energy, and and no more no more signs of yeast overgrowth. Okay, so quickly, what we're eating. Um, so this was. I know this sounds crazy given how sick I was. But I was really not wanting to do this because it sounded horrible to me. I was absolutely horrified when the diet specialist and the functional medicine specialist were explaining to my son and I what carnivore diet meant. Um, I have never been one that eats a lot of meat. Um, I'm not vegetarian by any means. I've always liked meat, but... For me, even when I went paleo, and I always made a point of explaining this to people, that paleo didn't mean more meat. 
that I was still eating the same amount of meat, just more vegetables um, instead of starches. And I love fruits and vegetables. For years we've been getting, we've joined a community supported agriculture program. We sign up every season. We get a box of fresh seasonal fruits and vegetables every week. I love it. I love the variety. Um, so these were all reasons why I really was not thrilled about this. My son, on the other hand, was very happy. You know, they said meat, fish, meat, fish, seafood, bacon, butter, eggs. My son was like, this is great. This is the way I like to eat. <laughs> He said, now I don't have to feel guilty because I'm not eating more vegetables like mom tells me. <laughs> so he's been very happy. Um, he's doing it as well. I don't think super, super strict, but he did tell me the other day they have also been using butter instead of olive oil to cook with. So my biggest worry, I have given up so much because of my chronic illness. There are so many things I can't do. I can't have alcohol, can't have sugar. That's been true for a long time. Um, can't have caffeine. <laughs> My activity level is severely restricted because with ME-CFS, exertion can trigger a relapse. And so my life is already so small, so restricted that restricting food even further just sounded awful to me. But I was desperate. I was feeling so horrible. And I did think, if this works, it'll be worth it. And I would say it has been. So the diet so far, it's not, it is a little boring. Um, this time of year, I'm missing making soups and stews, um, things like that. It's better than I expected. Um, they advised me to eat a wide variety of meats different cuts of meat, you know, different things. So during the week, we are eating a wide variety of chicken, pork, beef, uh, bison once. Um, we are having fish. During the holidays, we had seafood. There is there is more variety than I expected. Um, I'm learning some things, like some people do carnivore without any spices or seasonings because most of those are plant-based. I think that's a little too much for me. So, you know, I will take a nice piece of salmon, sprinkle it with some smoked paprika or curry powder, something really flavorful. Um, I'll take nitrate-free, more on that in a moment, pancetta, do that in the pan and then pan fry the salmon in the, the oil from that. Um, we are doing obviously lots of stuff on the grill. Although this last week, you know, it was in the teens and twenties last week, we got six inches of snow, which is a lot for here. So we weren't using the grill as much. Um, we're roasting, roasting pork loin. Um, I was really, hankering for more flavor. So we cooked a pot roast and I cooked it according to my normal recipe, including the onions, though not nearly as much as I used to do. Um, I used one small onion. The recipe normally calls for three large onions. Um, and I didn't actually eat the onions themselves, but it was cooked in the broth flavored with the onions. So that added flavor as well as all the spices that normally go into the recipe. We, of course, left out the carrots and potatoes, which I missed, but um, but the pot roast was delicious. It tasted so great to me. We are buying a lot of meats at Trader Joe's. If you have a Trader Joe's near you, I highly recommend you take advantage of that. So this is something else I've heard people say, I can't do carnivore because it's too expensive. It's not necessarily expensive. And if you look online, type in any search engine, carnivore diet on a budget, carnivore diet, low income, anything like that, whole bunch of articles and videos will come up. 
Obviously you can use cheaper cuts of meat. Um, that pot roast, pot roast is a very cheap cut of meat and it gave us four meals, two dinners and two lunches for the two of us. Um, you know, things like ground meats are usually cheaper, but also I'd recommend you check out Trader Joe's if you have one near you, if you are lucky enough to have one near you, because Trader Joe's has lower prices than most grocery stores. Um, and I've heard also that Aldi is a grocery store with lower prices. So you may have other chains in your area that feature low prices, um, Trader Joe's has very high quality, all natural foods. You recognize everything on the ingredient list if you buy some of their prepared foods, which you can't on carnivore. <laughs> but we have been buying some of their marinated meats. Now, sometimes these are a little bit of a cheat because they might be marinated. Oh, like there's a balsamic chicken that's marinated in balsamic vinegar and olive oil. Um, not much really remains from the, you're not eating much of that really from the marinade. And if you look at the package, it'll say like one gram of carbs, two grams of carbs. So, you know, it's a little bit of a cheat, but very flavorful. Um, so definitely recommend checking out those. Also, one of my biggest concerns with this diet still, and definitely a concern for long term, I don't, that was the only study, that Harvard survey. There is nothing looking at carnivore diet long term. And if you search on YouTube, you will find plenty of videos on how to do carnivore, videos about its health benefits, but you will also find plenty of videos from people saying, I did carnivore and my health worsened and this is what happened to me. Pretty scary stuff. I'm not too worried about that because my plan is to do full carnivore for three months and then ease into a more keto kind of diet. Back to the uh, processed meats or cured meats have nitrites in them. And it's been known for decades that these contribute to cancer lunch meats or cold cuts, whatever you, you call them where you are, um, ham, sausage, bacon, all this stuff that we're eating right now. So I do buy um, only natural, no nitrites. We've got this really delicious Polish sausage from um, our natural food store nearby, no nitrites. Right in any regular grocery store, you can find, luckily it's becoming more mainstream, you can find cold cuts with no nitrates. Some of the biggest brands have ones with no nitrates now. Just read the label. Um, I do know that the research shows that even those naturally cured, meat, cured meats with no nitrates do have trace amounts of nitrates, even from the natural process. Um, so, you know, it is a little, it is a little bit of a concern for me. Um, highly recommend, sorry, this package is already open, so it's kind of gross, but Trader Joe's uncured dry rubbed bacon. Oh, this stuff is amazing. I mean, I liked it even before carnivore diet. The pork it, that they use has no antibiotics. It's um, vegetarian fed pork, um, no artificial ingredients, minimal, minimally processed, and no nitrates. That is uncured, which means to me there's less um, of, a, of a danger. Um, and same with the pancetta. We bought that at Trader Joe's at our local natural food store. Um, we've got, we've gotten some delicious breakfast sausage uncured from a, a local farm that delivers to our natural food store. Go to a farmer's market near you. Ignore the vegetables. <laughs> Um, unless you're adding cruciferous vegetables like I have. and um, But look for the, the farmers who are providing meats. They will be all natural and, you know, have no antibiotics. None of the things in meat that, 
and processed meat that can be harmful. So that's something else you can do to save money, go to farmer's markets. Okay, so future options. The advice was strict carnivore for three months. So I'm gonna stick to my 97% carnivore diet for that long, at least. Um, I will probably look at keto or paleo for the longer term, but being more strict than I was before. I know <laughs> my husband and I keep joking with each other. It's a slippery slope. You know, you have a little bit and then you want a little bit more. We're both missing our nightly chocolate. And all I was eating was one square of 91% dark chocolate, which has almost zero sugar, but it is carbs. Um, so I've been pretty good about that. So is it for you? Again, you have to talk to your own medical professionals about your own health conditions. Now, my guess is that many mainstream doctors are gonna think this is not a good idea because of all this, you know, decades worth of thoughts that, that too much meat and too much fat are bad for you. A lot depends on where you're starting from. I had already been paleo for many years, and then I did that two week um, period that was carnivore plus, Good sized servings of cruciferous vegetables and a little avocado and olives. Was still using olive oil at that time. Um, and then went whole carnivore. So it depends on where you're starting from. If you are starting from a traditional diet, then I would say your first step is to cut out sugar and refined carbs, refined grains because those are the things, no matter what your health issues are, even if you're mostly a healthy person, those are the things that there is plenty of research showing. Those are highly inflammatory in our bodies. Um, they will, those kinds of foods are what increases blood sugar, um, makes your blood sugar jump up and down, which is really unhealthy and can make you feel awful. So, you know, I'd say that's your first step. I would say paleo is a great first step. Um, and again, I'll include my, um, my blog post below, but keeping in mind that where I described the modified paleo we were eating, I would stick with strict paleo, um, especially if yeast overgrowth is an issue. Keto is also an option. I think anytime you eliminate processed foods and focus on whole foods, your health's going to improve. That's just common sense. Um, so I didn't really define paleo here, but it is no processed sugars. You are allowed honey, maple syrup, agave, things like that, natural sugars on paleo. If you have yeast overgrowth, you need to avoid all of that. Um, paleo is no grains, no dairy, no alcohol, and no legumes. And some people, particularly those with immune disorders, also eliminate nightshade vegetables. That's things like potatoes, tomatoes, bell peppers, um, eggplant, things like that. As I described, keto is limit carbs to 20 to 40 grams a day, more fats, nuts and healthy oils, avocado and coconut, um, things like that. Yeast overgrowth is an issue and you're doing paleo, again, not even the natural sugars, and probably need to cut out fruit at first too until you get it under control. Check out the blog post on yeast overgrowth. Check out all the information I've included down below. A lot of people have been asking me how it's going, so I hope this gives you some idea of what we're doing and why and what results we're seeing so far. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions at all. I'm always happy to answer. If you have any comments, um, what kind of diet you found helpful, anything at all, um, you know, use the comments as a place to chat with me. You can also find me on Twitter and um Got a Facebook page for my blog, as well as the YouTube channel.